Good morning, and welcome to Workplace TV. My name is Ricardo Granderson, and I have the good fortune of having our first guest, Mr. Matt Packness. Matt is an expert in workplace bullying, and we are delighted to have Matt here with us on Workplace TV today. Matt, thank you very much for coming. Um, what is workplace bullying, and what does it look like in the workplace? Well, it's, it's a very good question. I often get it. I've been working in organizations for 25 years, and people all say, what's the difference between having a tough, demanding boss that has high expectations and someone that's a bully? And I think the bottom line difference is trust. If you feel as though when you're in a vulnerable position, your manager is giving you the tools, the coaching, the training that you need in order to get the job done, he's creating or she's creating a safe environment for you to excel. Bullies intentionally do the opposite. They take a vulnerable person, someone with not a lot of experience, and they undermine their trust. They belittle them, they degrade them, they don't give them the proper tools, they set them up for failure. So I think that's the real difference between someone who's a bully and someone who's trustworthy. And uh, often the best employees are the targets of the bullies uh, because they are threatened. Bullies are essentially threatened. They feel it's based in incompetence, and they're threatened by someone that has extreme. I had the luxury of sitting next to a, a supermodel. One of our friends from Brown uh, is, is married to one, and I said, where do I know you from? And she said, she didn't want to tell me. Then he took me aside, and she said, Sports Illustrated, that's where you know her from. She's okay. a model. Okay. I said, all right. And she, she was being bullied in the workplace. Right. Striking, brilliant, number one performer but she posed a threat to her boss. So in other words, bullying is something that can occur in an array of industries, whether it's sports, entertainment, newsrooms, maintenance and operations, is that correct? Every industry, there's, there's a higher propensity in the research that shows that in, org in organizations where there's a lot of manufacturing, uh, where there's a lot of high demand, where there's a lot of expectation for production, it's more common because on unrealistic expectations can be set and they laid the groundwork for bullying and often someone that is in a maybe doesn't really belong in a leadership role is in the leadership role and that's how they try to command control and power now is bullying illegal bullying per se is not illegal uh, it, there's although in several states right now and there's a national movement and legislation actually uh, being proposed to make bullying illegal, but also, you know, to make it fair, false reporting uh, is also part of this bill and a lot of these bills because, you know, it's sort of a gray area. Factually, a lot of times bullying is misconstrued or it basically is represented by harassment or discrimination. It's the same thing. So right. when you're being bullied, you probably qualify, the, the case probably qualifies as some for, sort of form of harassment or discrimination. Okay, thank you for that. Can you give us one recommendation that you give to companies about bullying? Probably uh, the best thing that can be done, and this is tragically you know, represented with the gym gymnasts, with these wrestlers at Ohio State, these poor uh, student athletes have been abused. When they go in, there's no one that sits them down, and this carries over to the corporate world and says, this is what bullying is and it's on the walls, and everyone's very clear about what constitutes bullying. And this is what proper conduct is, and proper expectations, and proper managerial behaviors are. Right. Everyone can agree on them, everyone signs off on them, and then there's a clear reporting process for where they can go to get it addressed. Right now, everywhere they can go, even on the outside, a lot of times authorities, local lawyers, if it's a big company, they're aligned with the company. Right. Internally, there's really nowhere to go. Right. So there should be the most successful uh, cases that I've seen settled have been when the bullied person or the target goes to the EEOC. They take it to a federal level. The EEOC, and when you say EEOC, is that an acronym for something? Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. Thank or, you. Or the Human Rights Commission. Right. Every state has one. We don't want to overwhelm them. They're probably saying, oh, why do you tell, why do you tell them that? But now right. we're going to get more calls. But that's right. where I've seen the most justice played out. Okay. Uh, right now. 
And that's why we're making initiatives to make this more of a national movement where people know where to go with your efforts and with other efforts like yours. Right. They have a viable option of where they can go to get good insights and get good direction. Thank you. I appreciate that. Now, if companies or individuals want to learn more about you, Matt Packness, uh, how can they find you? I also understand that you've written a book and that you've been doing some book signings. Maybe you can talk about that a bit. Yeah, I just had a uh, signing yesterday, and my 90-year-old coach, who was a tough coach, we went 33-0-0 in our three years playing in Madison, New Jersey uh, High School. Right. Um, he was an ex-Marine, tough as nails, but we felt safe with him. Uh, he was at my signing, and I told him, if you show up, I'm going to lose it. And right. I lost it. But right. anyhow, what's successful, the title, what's the title successful, of the book? Leaders, successful leaders are not bullies and how to stop abuse at work and build exceptional organizations. Case-based, it's based on real situations I've run into, either in my own experiences at work or in helping my clients deal with bullying bosses and abusive bosses in the workplace over the last 25 years. I'll just as an aside, I worked with Joe Paterno and Jerry Sandusky when I was at Penn State. Now, I never saw any abuse, but um, I, it was a power and control dynamic. The right. abuse of power out there was... So when I learned of all this in retrospect, I said, that, that does not shock me. It right. was horrific. I wish I'd been able to recognize more when I saw it to be right. able to stop it. But um, that's that's the issue. Is it's all about power and control. So anyhow, my book is related to that, uh, How to Stop Abuse in the Workplace. Uh, successful leaders are not bullies. And if people want to reach me, it's just my name, Matt Packness, M A T T. P A K N I S dot com. And uh, that's my website. And then there's all, I have a blog. Uh, I'm a registered speaker on several bureaus. So I'm I believe you've done a few TED Talks as well. Done a couple of TED Talks. So you can go on there and uh, I'm just here to help. Uh, based on my childhood and based on my own personal experiences, this is a calling and I, I'm here to help people. And uh, I really appreciate this opportunity to sit here and speak with you, Ricardo. Well, thank you very much, Matt, for stopping by Workplace TV today. For those of you watching Workplace TV for the first time, this is our inaugural efforts into the public space, and we hope that you think of Workplace TV as the first stop towards finding solutions to workplace problems. Thank you, and be well. <laughs>